Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about Loki Season 2, Episode 4. Um, right off the bat, I want to go ahead and say um, I am so torn about how I feel about this episode. On the one hand, I liked it and I'm really glad that the story is going in the way that it's going. And I really like that there's going to be like a giant mystery to kind of unfold. And I really think that um, it's setting up Episode 5 to be very similar to Episode 5 of the first season, which I thought was really good. Um, but I'm just so thrown off by the pacing of this show. So right off the bat, I want to talk about um, the ending of the episode. Spoiler alert for people who haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, um, click off of this video, maybe come back to it later. Um, but the way this episode ended is such a huge cliffhanger. The TVA as we know it is probably destroyed. And I am incredibly confused about what that means for us going forward because they were trying to save the TVA and obviously by the end of this season there's probably still going to be a TVA standing of some kind. And I'm really confused about whether or not it's going to have to be like rebuilt from scratch or if they're going to be able to like go back in time and somehow redo this moment that they just did because one of the last like set of promos that Marvel put out before releasing the first episode was one where Loki kept saying it's going to be really hard to explain this to you guys again and then he says I've been pulled through time and I am going through between the past and the present or whatever his monologue is and then he says the word again and then he says one more thing about how this is going to be really challenging for us to accomplish again and so it very much set up the idea that there's going to be like a time loop essentially and i'm really thinking that the next couple of episodes is really going to be like a groundhog's day episode for loki himself trying to get the team back together get back to the situation that they were in and try to redo the time loop thing i have a feeling we just watched victor timely get spaghettified he got he got turned into spaghetti um we watched that happen and um i feel like after seeing that, we're probably going to see at least two more of the team members doing it because I feel like something that would make a lot of sense is if they have to do exactly what they were just attempting to do, but do it again. And then we have Mobius do it because Mobius thinks, oh, okay, I can do this. And then he dies and then they get reset again. They fail, obviously. Um, and then Loki finally realizes he's the one who needs to do it and he needs to use his magic or like him and Sylvie realize that they have to do it together. I don't know. I think either of those would work relatively well and it'd be pretty cute. Um, but I really feel like Victor Timely being the one to go do the thing just seemed like such a terrible idea. And I feel like he probably had like a alternative motive motive to doing that that we don't entirely know. Um, I think a lot of people are saying it that, you know, he just wanted to be the hero and the fact that uh, Miss Minutes saying you will never be him kind of made him be like, well, I'm going to be my own person. And I'm going to go be a hero. God damn it. Um, but I, I feel like it's more than that. I feel like Victor Timely is still a lot smarter than he's letting off. And I feel like that's probably the last that we've seen of Victor Timely. But when he dies, there's like a, a yellow like flash of beam or of light or whatever that like goes off of him and like kind of like goes away. And I kind of feel like somewhere, somehow, Victor Timely knew that he had like basically like a kill switch inside of him. And when he died, um, it would pass all of his information and his knowledge to like another Kang variant or something like that. I could be wrong. I'm not entirely sure what's happening with that, but I feel like we're supposed to see Jonathan Majors again, and I feel like seeing him in this next upcoming episode isn't going to fit in as well. So I feel like it's going to be saved for like a big reveal towards the end of the next episode that there's a version of He Who Remains who is alive and well and is A-OK. -okay. Um, obviously, I could be completely wrong about that, but that's just my speculation. Um, I think that the way that this episode ended, though, is so weird, and the pacing of the show is so weird. So um, before this season came out, I made a prediction that the first two episodes were going to be a time loop of sorts, and that is going to be Groundhog's Day, and it was going to be, what's it called? Loki dealing with the time slipping and him dealing with the fact that the people in the TVA don't fully know who he is, and he has to, you know, go back to the right time and find Mobius and Hunter B-15 and explain to them what's going on and stuff. And um, that was kind of stuff that happened in the first episode, but then the time looping part of it never came into fruition. I think that that's what's going to happen now. So I could be wrong. Obviously, I have no idea. But that's my thought process for where this episode is going. And then um, the last like little bit of like stuff that I wanted to talk about. I love the way that they are doing closed time loops in this show. I feel like they've done a really great job establishing certain time travel rules. Um, I feel like when they put out Avengers Endgame and they basically were like... Movies like Back to the Future are bullshit and stuff like that in the MCU. A lot of people were like, oh my god, that's absolutely terrible. And they were like really upset that the MCU 
finally is doing time travel, but they're not doing it like the way that they want it to be done. And I feel like Loki so far has kind of been reestablishing certain time travel rules and basically establishing that the reason why the rules in Endgame um, were the way that they are is because the TVA prunes those branch timelines, like things that aren't supposed to happen. And I feel like because of that, um, the fact that the TVA isn't pruning timelines anymore, now we can have some of those like Back to the Future style time tra travel tropes that we know and love. And um, I think that the way they're doing it in the show is great. Um, one of the main ones... Ouroboros having like his name like literally like explained perfectly um fantastic when Victor Timely comes into the room he's just like oh my god you're OB I was expecting him to be shocked that it's OB because of other reasons and then when he like pulled out the book he's like you 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 wrote the the book and I was like oh my god that's right because a picture of him is literally at the front of the book and then when OB went to say, well, yeah, I got the majority of my information from Victor Timely, this great person in the 19th century or whatever, and everybody in the room was just like, so, what? And, uh, and then they obviously say the thing that the Ouroboros is, which is a snake eating its own tail. Um, that was great. That was fantastic. Um, I think that the closed time loop of, um, Loki having to prune himself that was pretty cool and um, I really liked the way that they did it as well because I feel like they did a really good job of like building up the tension but like the second they switched to showing the past Loki instead of current Loki I knew immediately what was happening I was like okay so he's about to you know be on the other side of the elevator doors which is where Sylvie is like oh my god there you are and then Loki's there so I don't know I kind of didn't like that this happened as quickly as it did. Um, I feel like, obviously, it's cool that they're paying off that uh, little trope and, you know, completing the loop like I was just talking about. But at the same time, I was really hoping that that was a reveal that would happen towards the end of the episode. I feel like all of the events have happened in about, like, three or four days. And, like, pacing-wise, everything about Loki, the entire show, it just feels like it's going way too fast. And I like it, and I'm really enjoying it, but I really wish that if they make another season of the show they really spread it out because as of right now we got the first season which is six episodes which i think they did a really good job with the six episode format i think that it's done a pretty solid job but then this season so far to me has been really all over the place the first episode seemed perfectly paced the second episode seemed to be a little bit too fast the third episode seemed a little bit slow at points and then it sped up towards the end and then this episode kind of hit the ground running and then also towards the middle of it there were some parts where it kind of felt a little more dragged out and I'm kind of like upset because like there are parts of this episode that I feel like would have been interesting like full episode arcs but we didn't really get to see it like the character docs and her entire army being you know um I feel like that entire thing could have been dragged out more I feel like we really should have gotten to know the character of the general docs a little bit more because that scene is very like I don't know something about this show Feels like B Hunter B15 was supposed to do a lot more in it. Um, because every single time something has happened with Hunter B15 and it's been like her time to shine, it's been because something tragic is happening and we're watching an ungodly amount of people die. And instead of watching the thousands of people die, obviously, we're watching her reaction to the thousands of people dying. And it kind of makes me upset because I'm like, I feel like Hunter B15 was probably supposed to have like I'm not gonna say like a full episode, but I feel like she should have had an episode where we kind of had more of the interactions between her and General Docs to have a general idea of, you know, what their relationship was. Because at the beginning of the first season, obviously, they have their conversation in the war room where we fi figure out that they're on opposite sides of the same argument. And other than that, we know nothing about their connection. So when we see Hunter B-15's reaction later to the fact that all of them are... It's a... Uh... I don't want to say it's lackluster, but it's just, like, it kind of feels like, I, I don't know. It, it, it just felt kind of like they were missing stuff that would have been helpful to convey the emotions that we needed to convey there. I think that the actress did a really good job, but like I said, we just, we don't know the connections of the characters, so it doesn't make as much sense to us why, I don't know. I, I don't know. That That's kind of one of my biggest like things about the show though is that some of these characters who really deserve moments to shine have not been given moments to shine and episode two still sticks out like a sore thumb to me because it was literally a brad wolf episode 
and Brad Wolf has still not really done much. And I don't know if it's going to be revealed at some point that he is like a much bigger character than he is. But as of right now, it feels like we spend an ungodly amount of time focusing on the wrong character. And I'm a little bummed out about that. But that being said, I'm very excited for these next couple of episodes. I feel like there's been a lot of great action sequences. The humor in this show has once again been like unmatched. I think the cinematography is fantastic. The sequence where Sylvia and Loki are talking in the automat and um, it like zooms out to show like the entire room and then them having this conversation. It's just so cinematically beautiful and they're having really deep conversations and they basically feel like tiny, like they're all of the stuff that they're doing is very like insignificant. And I feel like that camera trick to like make them these tiny little, you know, people in a gigantic room really does a good job of making them feel small and look small. So um, as a whole, set design, fantastic. The cinematography, fantastic. The acting and writing, fantastic. I'm loving the show. I think it's great. Um, and I really just want more of it. So I, I will say that. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. I love and appreciate you guys so much. Uh, if you guys have anything that I completely missed about this episode, because I will admit I watched it late at night last night when I was falling asleep. So I may have missed a couple of things. There might have been some fun, entertaining stuff that I completely did not talk about. Um, I love the sequences with uh, Victor Timely just being so shocked by like modern technology. That's so much fun. Like, that's so cute. But um, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. If you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bow. Bow, bow. He wanted me to come, but first I did this. We planned a day, and then we did this. Wanna be in love with the girls with the kisses. Don't give a damn, I'll rid this. I like this when I run the distance. I run the five kids for Felicis. I wanna live within the business. Buying more than what's on the clearances. You're getting big, cause I know you're a physicist. I wanna deny this shit, I'm unlimited.